Welcome to Corpse Club, the official podcast of DailyDead.com. I'm your host, Jonathan James. I'm excited to have with me Lauren Lavera. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. It is so good to see you again and speak with you again. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's it's awesome because there is so much energy around Terrifier 3. It is, you know, our, our, li- our listeners are going to listen to this the week after, but it is opening weekend. So I'm super excited. How are you feeling? I'm really excited. I'm, I'm, I just feel this immense amount of pride for the entire team. I'm, I'm so proud of everyone that's worked on this film, of course, particularly Damien. And, and um, he's just a powerhouse and he's the captain that has led us into these demented waters. So I'm really happy for people to finally witness all of this. It's been really cool. I mean, and it's been years in the making, but it was just amazing to see all of the excitement and the build up around Terrifier 2. And that's just continued to snowball into uh, Terrifier 3. No pun intended there because it's a Christmas movie. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think people are so excited for it. And, and, you know, for me, it's one of those things where I saw it, uh, you know, already uh, obviously a couple weeks ago. But uh, I'm excited. I'm going to go back tonight because I want to see it with a huge crowd. I want to see that energy there. It really is something special. And um, and so, yeah, so uh, just as a, a quick heads up to our listeners, we are going to dive into spoilers. So, you know, it's like I said, this will release past opening weekend. So hopefully you already had a chance to see it. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I wanted to kind of take it back to the beginning and just talk about, you know, your initial impressions of, you know, reading the script. I think, you know, one of the things for me, you know, that I really appreciate about this movie is that this takes a a different direction from a traditional slasher. It spends, you know, it it spends a separate time with you, separate time with art, and it really gives a lot of opportunity to build up Sienna and really kind of talk about, hey, this is what you know, somebody who goes through a traumatic experience like like that, this is what they're dealing with years later. I found it really fascinating. What, what, what were your first impressions? I was really excited. I was really excited to explore the human condition and what it would look like five years later. And I think that was the biggest challenge for me because I have a, and I think most people have a very clear idea of how someone would react the moment after those horrific events. But five years later, Time has passed. It, it has digested a bit and in, 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 um, metabolized in her body. And I, I think it was interesting trying to find how she might have grown as a person and, and how she might have regressed as a person. Um, and maybe what characteristics she might have taken on or, you know, if she's stronger in certain areas, if she's weaker in certain areas. And, and that was really fun to discuss with Damien. Like, I, I, of course, read the script. I read a couple versions of the script. It had evolved after the first time I read it and I gave him my notes and things of that nature. And I, I told him um, what I thought of the character, my questions about the character. And it was really fun coming to an understanding and making discoveries with Damien. And I also got to do that with my acting coach after that, Brian Fox, who I call my secret weapon. He helped me with Terrifier 2 and he helped me again with Terrifier 3. And he helped me see things that I didn't really necessarily see maybe the first or second read. Um, and, and, and this is like the dream as an actor. You can, you get to be in this really fun movie where like all of these crazy events are happening around you, but you get to be grounded at the same time. And I, I really loved being grounded in this really messed up, fantastical killer clown movie. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting because obviously, you know, I think folks that are not super into horror are going to be focused, you know, whether it's, you know, the news or whatever the case on the gore side of it. What makes the story and the characters really special is how much time is focused on building the world, on building these characters. So I know obviously you and and so many other people understand that it's just much, it's much more than the gore. That just takes it to another level. What was the filming? So I guess let's let's talk about, you know, on set. You have, you know, kind of, like I said, your dedicated time. You have Art and Jonathan doing their thing. Were you spending time seeing what they were doing on set? How was, how was that? Did you get to watch some of that? You know what? This time was much different from Terrifier 2. We had a lot less time of filming, which is a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because we have a lot more more energy we get things done it's good to be efficient but it's a curse because for terrifier 2 we i had time to go visit sets and i didn't necessarily have that this time i did with some actors like um with uh, jason patrick scene i went to go see that because i'm a huge fan and um i really wanted to see some of the other scenes like with daniel robe 
Huck and Clint Howard. And um, yeah, I, I, I really wanted to see all of that. Um, luckily, I did have some scenes with Elliot, who of course plays my younger brother, yeah. but I didn't get to visit him the times that I wanted to. I really wanted to see the shower scene. There were so many practicals that I missed um, just because I was busy or like I, I had I had other things going on. Um, and of course, time didn't permit. But um, if I was close by, I would definitely visit if I could, because I just love hanging out with these guys. And since you, you mentioned the the shower scene, you know, obviously you've had a chance to see the movie since. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? Is that something like now that, you know, you, you've been a part of it and you see how it's going on behind the scenes, does it make you less squeamish or do you see it and you're like, oh, like it's it's still it's still a lot? <laughs> You know what? It's so funny, and I told I told David this particularly. One of my favorite moments of the film, because we hear it in the trailer, Mia saying like, um, you know, I want to see what it's like, like when it, what's it like to look in that serial killer's eyes? Like, do they have a soul? Like, what is their breath like? And I loved the payoff of that moment, and the payoff being after Art the Clown, of course, and of course this is a spoiler, mm -hmm. um, attacks her. Um, he like opens her eyes, makes him makes her look at him, and he takes off his glasses to be like, "This is what this looks like. You wanted this," and it's one of my favorite moments. And it's not even a gore moment; it's just like a, an actor or a scene between two actors just no. like interacting. And I absolutely love that moment, and I, I just thought Dave did so well in that moment. Um, but I also like as much as I love. Mason, who plays Cole, I really love his death. I, I think it. <laughs> like I, every time I'm in the theater, I cheer. Like I'm just like, yes, and it's just so good. And it and it, and um, it, it was just done so well, and it, it's so fun. And I really thought that Mason really killed it in that scene. Like he he really gave it his all, and I was so proud of him. And um, and of course, Mia or Alexa as well, who plays Mia, she did such an amazing job. Um, I was really proud of those two young actors. But um, but yeah, hopefully I answered your question. I kind of went off yeah. on a tangent there. No, of course. I love those people. Yeah. No, it was it was good to hear about it. So, you know, I wanted to talk a good bit about the finale because it's what we didn't have a chance to talk about, uh, you know, in detail before. It is a, a really intense sequence. And so, you know, I kind of want to spend more time talking about the training, how long it took. You know, I understand that, you know, you have a, a martial arts background. And so would you mind telling me a little bit about that? And the reason I'm asking is because I have a bit of a martial arts background. I used to teach it for a living. And so it always fascinates me when somebody else, uh, when somebody else loves it. Oh, what, uh, what discipline? What did you teach? So I used to teach uh, Taekwondo for a living. So I have a okay. second degree black belt. So I've taught, you know, all, all ages, all, all, all levels. So yeah, it's always a, a passion of mine. I love that. I love to meet a fellow martial artist. I also have a second Dan and um, I've been, I taught martial arts. I started teaching martial arts when I was 12. Um, so, and I did that most of my life and I still teach kickboxing whenever I have time. I obviously don't have time anymore. So I love, I love that we're both fellow Taekwondo um, students um, yeah. and teachers. Um, that's really, that's really fucking cool. Um, yeah, no, I've, but besides Taekwondo, I, I've also trained martial arts I just it's my first love like even before I, I mean acting is my initial love and it's my everything now but it, it was the first thing I fell in love with and it's so special to me and I still train I, I train Wushu now with my master Lee who's incredible um, but you know what martial arts and acting really go hand in hand and I and I noticed that recently when um, in, in my class one of the students uh, who's who's this young man who's like, yeah, Lauren, I know you're an actor. Like, I want to be an actor. What, what is that? What, what, how would I get started? And I, I love that. I love answering these questions, but I also like to tell people the, the struggles with being an actor because people just think it's, you know, fame or I don't know what people think, but it's nothing like people expect. Um, but Taekwondo and, and martial arts in general teaches you perseverance and indomitable spirit. And that's something I take with me, like it, as an actor. And you need that, especially with the finale. It's a perfect example of that. Um, we're doing the same thing. And especially me, who's getting the brunt of everything over and over again. And I, of course, do my own stunts in the finale. And I'm literally duct taped to a chair. And I was initially, um, I was initially like not completely sold on that idea because I told Damien, I'm like, Damien, 
I'm going to go crazy in this chair. I'm going to break out of it every single time. And lo and behold, I did. I broke out of it every single time to the point where I had to ask art department, and they were very kind to do this, to literally duct tape me from my wrist to my elbow, multiple letters, so it wouldn't come out. And I, it still yeah. came out. I broke the chair. Like, I, I got <laughs> It because I was, I was thrashing in this thing to the point where I even asked Damien, like, do you think that we can nail Sienna's hands and feet, like nail her hands to the chair, nail, nail her feet to the ground so it's harder for me to move and I have something to work against? And he loved the idea, but um, the uh, special effects team did not. They were like, we don't have time to do that. No, just deal with it. So I was like, OK. So um, so, yeah, we, we worked on that for a week. Um, and I did the choreography with Drew Leary, who was our incredible stunt coordinator. And I did have a stunt performer, Jenna Helmuth, who was incredible. Um, and she was she did some things. I, I luckily got to do like 98 percent of my own stunts, particularly the fight scenes. Um, but she was always there to just help. She was like, if I had questions, she was like, yeah, try it like this. Um, and what's interesting about being a martial artist especially in the fight scenes, Drew, who was our coordinator, would be like, Lauren, you look too clean. Like, you need to messy it up. Like, you look too sharp. You look too clean. You look too, you just, you look too good. Like, you need to, like, <laughs> you're not a martial artist. And I was like, yeah, okay. Like, because we're used to, like, looking sharp and looking clean. And, you know, it's, it's part, especially Taekwondo, it's very much a performance martial art. Um, so, yeah, that was the, my favorite part. Like, forgetting that I'm a martial artist, getting it messy, getting down and dirty in these scenes. And even though I had to take a lot of ibuprofen to get through the week, it was really rewarding. And it was my favorite week, probably. Yeah, it was a, it's a, a really intense scene, especially, you know, even from like a, a physical standpoint, but from a, you know, someone who's watching, who's investing these characters to see the, the Jonathan reveal at the end. And you're like, oh, no, you're like... <laughs> What's yeah. going on there? And so um, this is, you know, I heard this compared to, and I would agree, it's kind of like the Empire Strikes Back of, of the, the movie series in terms of like, hey, things end and they're not necessarily in a, in a great place. There's things that, that certainly have to be resolved and, and it, it definitely looks like, uh, you know, like, like Sienna's going to do it. Um, how excited are you to continue telling the story? I know Damien, you know, hinted at, at Terrifier 4. So, you know, has it been something that, that you've already kind of actively talked about where this is where this is headed? Yes. So even when I was cast in Terrifier 2, Damien, he gave me an idea of where he wants the story to end. So even though I don't have all of the answers and I, I really don't want all of the answers because I want Sienna to discover it in real time um i'm very excited I, sienna means a lot to me so i i really want to give her a satisfying ending no matter how it ends i i just want, want to continue with her on this journey and i'm i'm also as a fan just really curious to see where damien takes it yeah i'm i, I have i have no idea where it's going to go one of the things that i love too is like the the expansion of kind of the possession mythology so, you know, we had a lot more time with, you know, with, with Victoria. We now understand a little bit more about how, how the demonic possession works or, or why they want to do it. And, um, and so I like that these layers are kind of getting slowly peeled back. So it's not like a dump of everything and it still allows us to, to kind of be like, hey, what's, what's going on there? Or, or imagine where we think things are headed. So I just think uh, it's been a, been a great series and continuing to see, you know, everything build upon. I think there's a lot of great things for fans. Speaking of the the fandom around this, you know, what's what's your experience been like, and and how has your experience been over the last couple of weeks? You know, interacting with fans at at screenings and, and social media, because like I said, there's so much buzz around this. It's been absolutely phenomenal. It it might be aside from doing the actual work, my favorite part about being an actor. I I really. I'm so humbled that people have embraced this character, have embraced the film. Um, and I'll tell you a story. At Sitch's Film Festival, uh, there is, so we arrived to the red carpet, me, Dave, and Damien. And as soon as I get out of the car, I hear this like little voice scream my name at the sidelines at the red carpet. And I immediately run to her. And it's like this nine, 10 year old girl. And she like wants my autograph. And of course I give it to her and she, she starts crying. And I'm like, oh my God, don't cry. And I, and I hold her. And her mom's like, oh, Sienna's her favorite character of all time. She was so excited to meet you guys. And I just held her. And at the end of the screen screening, she came back up to me, like wanting another hug. Aww. And um, I, of course, held her again. And, and it, it's moments like that 
especially when I see people have an emotional reaction to what we're creating and what we're creating is arguably really, I mean, it's not art, it is depraved. And um, it's to see that people still have this emotional connection to these characters. It's so rewarding. And um, it's, I, there are really no words for it. I'm just incredibly grateful. And I hope to continue to do Sienna justice for them. Yeah, that's, that's great to hear. Yeah, I mean, what, what I've found over the years is that, you know, for, for people who really love horror movies and watching this stuff, I've heard over the people like, what, what's wrong with you? Or like, you know, like, there's something wrong with you if you like, you know, if you like horror movies. But there are a lot of folks who use it to process different emotions in a safe space. And so being able to do that and being able to see characters or actors and being able to have them as a source of inspiration, um, it's just, uh, like I said, it's great to see. And so I did see a, a, a clip of, of you, you hugging the little girl on, on Instagram or on Twitter, and it really was sweet. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to see that. I know you're inspiring people all over the world. So I think that's really cool. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it was my favorite moment from the past couple of weeks, and I've had some really beautiful moments. So yeah. uh, I'm very blessed. So I definitely want to, you know, talk about your relationship with David, you know, on screen, off screen, you know, you spent quite a bit of time with him over the years. So, you know, can you talk a little bit about like where, where the two of you are at? Because, you know, I think as, as much as, you know, I know, you, you know, you're excited and, and uh, you, you know, that you're, you're in the middle of this, he is too. And so, you know, the, for the two of you to be able to kind of do this together over the course of these two movies has to be pretty special. Oh yeah, of course. I'm, I'm such a huge fan of his and I'm, I'm a huge advocate for him. I saw online, I don't know if he did it in an interview, he said that he wanted to be, um, and I've already known this about him. I've known this about him from the moment I met him, that he wants to, he wants his turn at playing the Joker. And I'm such a, a huge fan and an advocate for him that I like hope it happens. I hope like the stars align and he gets to do that. Um, but it, in terms of like just hanging out with him, um, the unfortunate thing is like especially for our european tour we were we were we were like sent to different countries so we didn't really get to spend that amount of the, the amount of time together that we would have liked at these conventions which i'm sure we'll do more of uh, in the coming year um we get to spend more time together we'll usually hang out but we're always exhausted um so it's it's kind of like um a catch 22 because like you get to spend time with these people but you're so exhausted from everything that all all of these blessings that we're getting that we don't really get to spend time like it's just we're there but we're not really there like we, we talk but we're also just like so drained um but i'm such a huge advocate of his <laughs> love him really and um hopefully we, we've talked about like going on vacation um at the end of the year but i'm working on another film after this so i don't think i'll be able to but um but like he's like yeah we're gonna go to hawaii and we're all gonna go and and i'm like yeah that sounds great let's let's do it but um it, it'll just be a matter of time before we're all busy again so we'll see hopefully we get to do that one day yeah yeah i hope you do yeah before you jump right into it again <laughs> Um, so with this being the, the, the Halloween season, I think it's great, you know, back to, to Terrifier, you know, four for me, I think it's our Terrifier three, I should say. It's uh, great because, you know, people are getting it during Halloween and then it's probably going to be available, you know, on digital. I don't know anything, but it probably be available on digital or on, on screen box, you know, in time for Christmas. And so I think people are going to be able to get to double dip. This is going to be a, you know, a tradition where people are just going to watch it all, all, you know, all year long in some cases, but definitely for the holidays. And so I think that's pretty cool. But we are in October, and so I definitely want to talk to you about some some Halloween traditions. You know, everybody has Halloween traditions. Everyone has go-to movies and candies and all that stuff. So I was curious, do you have favorite Halloween candy? Is there something that during the Halloween season either you always used to have or that you need to have yearly? For me, it is always uh, it's Twizzlers. They make special Twizzlers that they only make during Halloween. They're a little bit hollow, and they're, like, chewier and they're like this size, <laughs> and I go for them every year. So that's mine. I didn't know if you had one. Yeah, so you're like a candy candy person. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I love that. You like the sugar. I'm a chocolate person. Oh. <laughs> yeah, chocolate. So mine, I've, I'm so predictable. It hasn't changed from the moment I could remember to I could conceive thoughts to now. has always been Kit Kats and Reese's. No. They're my two faves. And I particularly love the, the the different shaped Halloween Reese's, like with the bats, the yeah. pumpkins, the witch's hats. They're my 
absolute favorite. So, and also I always, I, I try to give out full bars um, on Halloween. I want to be that house. Oh, so yeah, I'll you're, do that. yeah, you're, you're a good person. <laughs> I'm a beer and like I was always so excited when I got full bars so I'm gonna like give out full bars but I will also buy myself a separate bag of candy since I unfortunately am too old to go trick-or-treating so I have to buy my own candy um and it'll probably consist of Kit Kats and Reese's You are doing things the right way from the separate bag, your experience, your veterans, yeah from the, from the separate bag to the entire, uh, you know, full size candy bars. Uh, you, you're doing it right. Yeah. It's uh, for Kit Kats. Have you had the, there's the like Kit Kats you can only get in Japan. They, they, they export them out, but they have all different kinds of flavors. They have matcha, they have cheesecake. Like they are like Japan is known for their Kit Kats. So if you love Kit Kats, You need to like seek out the, because I can see you're like, ah, what, what are these? But you seek out the Japanese Kit Kats because they have like, they're on a whole other level over there. I'm going to go to Japan, not for the scenery, not for the culture, but for the Kit Kats. And thank you for that. I'm going to do that soon. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're all at the airport. And they have like, if you go to stores that have like, you know, like, like even in the U.S. that have, you know, different goodies and stuff like that from Japan, you will find all kinds of Kit Kats. I say this because I have a friend of mine who, who, you know, works in the U.S. and Japan. Every time he comes back, he brings me all kinds of different goodies, including different kinds of Kit Kats. He's a great friend. <laughs> Oh my god! I need to I need to adopt this friend because I also want these Kit Kats. I'll find them and I'll hopefully go to Japan just for that. And I trust me, I will. I am a chocolate fiend. Yeah, they have they have all kinds of boxes. So yeah, that's great. And uh, and then speaking of Halloween, do you have a go to? Do you have go to movies that you only watch during Halloween? It's not. It, I don't confine it to Halloween though, because I I want Halloween to be all year round. If it were up to me, it would be. literally Halloween town, like all year round. Of course, I, I loved the, the Disney movies like Halloween town and Hocus Pocus. Um, and I actually met Mick Garris like this, this at stitches and I was so excited. And I like, uh, I shook his hand and, um, Damien has spoken to him and Damien knows how much I love Hocus Pocus. And he like yells across the table, she loves Hocus Pocus. And I was like, Very embarrassing. um, but aside from that, like Halloween 1978 is my go-to Halloween watch. In fact, when I was at the New York premiere waiting for my hair and makeup to get done, it was just on the TV. Um, and really the entire franchise. And, and that includes the Rob Zombie um, iterations of that because I just love, I love Mike Myers. I, I just love everything about it. But also like really all of them, like Evil Dead, um, Scream. Um, I, I just watched Nightmare on Elm Street, the first one with my mother, um, like right before I left for Europe a couple of weeks ago. And we, we like fell asleep on the couch watching it. And it was, it was, it was a lot of fun, but, um, yeah, I watched them all. It's my favorite time of year and I have to watch it, but I also really love like the newer movies, like Hell House LLC. I'll watch this time of year. It has this really great fall vibe. Um, and like Caveat by Damien McCarthy, Uh, there's just so many amazing horror films that I try to like cram in this time of year. And unfortunately I haven't really had the time because I've been busy. It's a good problem to have, but um, I'm hoping I can catch up soon. Yeah, no, that's a great list. So yeah, it's uh, what do you call it? Everybody will be happy to hear that. You know, all of our our listeners and in, in this house, it's 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 Halloween every day. So um, yeah, so you're 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 with good company. But you know, I wanted to thank you very much for taking the time to talk with me. Um, like I said, our listeners are super excited for Terrifier. Like I said, I'm so excited. I'm come. I'm going to. Uh, it's, it's Friday as we're recording this, so I'm going to a screening tonight because I want to see it with a packed crowd. I want to see that reaction. So we really appreciate Oh, thank it. you. Thank you for doing that. I'm actually going to take Damien tonight to the movies and we're going to sneak in. I mean, we, we paid, but we're going to try to sneak into the theater and, and get a, a real honest reaction from people. So I'm really excited. Yeah, wonderful. Well, again, thank you so much. Thank you. It was good to see you again.